Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing the difference between competition and competitors. These are two terms which are thrown around a lot interchangeably and I wanted to demonstrate the difference between the two so that you know how to target your marketing effectively for each group. Let's say that we were in the market for a pizza this evening and we go to Google and we type in pizza. We're going to look at we're just going to consider the main players here so that it's easy for everyone to identify with because you know all of these companies. If I need a pizza for my family tonight, my main choices are Pizza Hut, Domino's, and Papa John's. They are competitors. The reason that they are competitors is because they are all different businesses, but each of those businesses offers effectively the same product right? And that product is that they all make pizzas. Now they all taste different and everybody has their personal favorite, but they are all selling pizza. So they're all competing in the same space. That makes them competitors. They're selling the same products effectively. Now, conversely, their competition. So Competitors are each unique in their own right. So Domino's competitors are Pizza Hut and Papa John's and Pizza Hut's competitors are Domino's and Papa John's. But all of them share the same indirect competition. And indirect competition would be things like, let's say that I did not want to go and pick up or pay for a pizza from a large provider. So what, what are my options? Well, I can go to the grocery store and I can buy a DiGiorno pizza. I can buy a frozen pizza of any kind, any supermarket, and there are more frozen pizza varieties than you could probably eat in a lifetime. Every single one of the competitors, again, that's going to be Domino's, Papa John's, etc. they all share this same indirect competition, okay? Competition means they are competing for the same market, but they are not selling the same products and services or expertise that you are. But they are still viable options for your customers, and that's why you have to be aware of noting the difference between a competitor and your competition, because then you can appropriately market against, if you will, those two groups. So. Let's go through real quickly and let me give you a couple more examples. And you know, right here looking at this, let me go back to the pizza demonstration. When you have, and I know that there are a lot of local pizzerias that people love. I mean, we have a couple here that my family absolutely loves, but for the purposes of this example, we're talking about, you know, again, Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut, and they are competitors, basically selling the same product. They have to compete against one another. And if, in my opinion, the one who's leading the pack right now is Domino's. And the reason that I say that is not because I think that Domino's pizza tastes better, because actually I don't. I think that their pizza has come a long way in the last couple of years. But let's look at something real quickly. And I don't even know if a lot of people know about this, because until I was researching for this video that I'm shooting for you right now, I didn't even realize that there were so many different ways that you could do this. So I'm typing 10 ways to order a Domino's pizza. All right. Now, did you know, <laughs> because I did not, so it says Domino's anywhere. Domino's is taking, their um, chief digital officer said something I think it was last year, and he said, you know, something to the effect of, today we're asking ourselves, are we a pizza company that uses technology, or are we a technology company that delivers pizza? And I mean, you know, hit it right on the head because there is a synergy there. You really kind of have to be both. Well, there's really no kind of about it. You have to be both nowadays. And back to my point about addressing, you know, gaining some kind of competitive advantage against your competitors, okay? And even against your indirect competition, that's why I'm bringing this Domino's example. They are making it so simple for customers to order pizza. Let's let's look at a couple of these cuz a few of them absolutely blew me away. 
So they have one that is a um, app and it's called the zero click app. And what happens is if you, let me see if I can pull it up here on the screen. There it is. Zero click app right here. If you have, have purchased a pizza from them and you store your easy order, if you open this app and you let it sit open for 10 seconds, it automatically places your last order. Now, if you're a busy person or a busy mom on the go, you're coming home from a soccer game, whatever, this is fantastic. I mean, you could do this sitting at a light with children screaming in the car, doesn't matter. You, you stop at the light, you open the app, and you just let the phone run, and then by the time you get there to your house or to pick it up, if that's how you're choosing to go get the pizza, it's ready. And why is this an important example? Because Domino's is really taking a look at their customer market and understanding if we remove the friction, if we remove the pain points, the, the long process to order online, which it used to be and is not anymore, calling the store and having them get it wrong, et cetera, et cetera, that we make it easier, this is Domino's, we make it easier for our customers to do business with us, thereby beating our competitors and really kind of encroaching on the indirect competition. Because now Domino's has a competitive advantage, right? Because they can bring the pizza to your house. Now DiGiorno may be less expensive, but nobody's going to drop it off at your door. I mean, I know that <laughs> their their advertisements sort of lead you to believe that. Or at least I thought that when they first came out with all their advertisements many, many years ago. But I mean, it's a frozen pizza. You have to go to the store. You still have to bring it home unbox it, put it in the oven, take it out, cook it. There's some work involved there. So Domino's is being very, very smart in addressing not only their competitors, but their competition. Let's look at a couple other ways real quickly. Um, you can order by tweet, which is just crazy to me. You can just text hashtag easy order. And then if you, um, if you text to, there it is, to D pizza, your last order, all you have to do is send the emoji, the pizza slice emoji, and it will place your order, open up a conversation about placing your order. These kinds of things make Domino's a world above Papa John's and Pizza Hut, who are still, you know, I don't, I don't want to say disparage their companies in any way, because actually I prefer one of those two. I prefer their pizza over Domino's, but usually it's Domino's that gets our business, and this is why. They make it easy. So Domino's taking the lead on their competitors and their indirect competition. Now, I think I've demonstrated the point about what the difference is between the two, but let me give you just two other examples just to kind of seal the deal and send it home. Let's say in this second example that we want a cup of coffee, or we want coffee. All right. Now, everybody knows who the major players are in coffee, and of course that changes depending on where you are in the world, and then even more specifically where you are regionally. Here in the South, CC's is a big deal. Um, CC's Coffee, I'm not a huge fan. I like their business concept. I just don't particularly care for the way their coffee tastes. But, you know, we have CC's, Starbucks, Seattle's Best out on the West Coast, and when you're flying, it, all of those are, I'm going to give you guys a second here, which one are they? Competitor or competition? They're competitors, okay? And I know that you guys all knew that. They're competitors. They are all selling, generally speaking, the same product. And that's why you see Starbucks, who would be taking the lead on this one, in my opinion, with their products to remove friction, right? Their customer loyalty, their program where you can order in a mobile app and then walk in and pick it up or drive around and grab it so that you don't even have to interact with people in the drive through I mean, Starbucks is leaps and bounds ahead of a place like CeCe's or Seattle's Best from my vantage point. Now, I'm speaking out of turn a little bit because I don't interact with those companies, so potentially they develop that technology and I am unaware of it. But as far as what I am aware of, Starbucks is definitely going to be the front runner in those competitors. But who is their competition, indirect competition? Well, my family and I go to Starbucks about once a month. That's a big treat for us. We do not go there a lot. But let's talk about who, who are their indirect competitors. Well, down here in the South, Folgers, Community Coffee is a big thing down here. And, of course, Keurig, the little coffee pods that go in. That These are all 
indirect competition for companies like Starbucks. Why? They're satisfying the same need, maybe without the same experience and certainly without the same level of expertise. But at the end of the day, it's coffee, right? Whether you get it from Starbucks or you brew it at home, still coffee. All right, third example. Let's say that this Saturday, I wanna take my daughter to have a manicure, pedicure for finishing this very aggressive testing thing that they have to do at the end of the year here in Louisiana. Okay, so we wanna find a nail salon here in Baton Rouge. Okay. Let's see. All right, so these people right here, Orchid, La Rouge, Iris, you know, 10 best nail salons in Baton Rouge. Let me open this up. Okay, all of these companies are, I left a pause there, exactly. They're competitors. They are competitors. They are all selling nail services, manicure, pedicure. Now, who is their indirect competition? Well, this is easy. Sally's, a place like Sally's where you go to get your own beauty supplies, Sally's is their indirect com competition. And then even more specifically, if I go to Walgreens, you know, I can grab, what is it called? Hard as, there we go, hard as nails. Okay, this, any of these nail polishes, there are a gazillion nail polish brands. Okay, this is just the one that jumped to mind. Let's see. I mean, more than you can shake a stick at, okay? OPI, SE, what is this, Foxy, I don't, it doesn't matter, you guys know, we've all seen nail polish. This is all an indirect competition for anybody, any of those competitor nail salons. Because the customer has one need, which is I want to have my nails done. And then you have those two sides of the market competing for that customer's business. The formal, you know, professional nail salons, competitors with one another, and then your nail polishes, gel nails, Sally's nails, your friend doing your nails, any and all of those things, indirect competition. Again, all satisfying the same need, meeting it in a different way. I hope that that was a helpful exercise for you. I know that whenever I teach classes um, to younger entrepreneurs, this is something that is always very confusing for them and they really enjoy understanding the difference between these two. So I thought I would share this with you. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Please check out my other videos in the description box below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and valuable and I will see you in the next video.